you are listening to this, if you're a real estate agent and you're like, I don't know, I'm like totally inconsistent, going upstream without a paddle, I don't even have a plan, where do they start? I think that what's missing is purpose and kind of asking yourself, is doing this activity actually going to produce? Like, what is the purpose of it? Literally spinning your wheels, right? You're like a hamster on this wheel. Like, oh, what's first, right? And go. Here's your formula. If you have found your way here, you are a real estate pro who's ready to transition from chasing leads to getting dream clients to chase you. This podcast is where you will learn the business and system strategies you need to grow your real estate business so that you can get paid consistently, connect with dream clients, and keep your sanity. You look amazing. Thank you. (laughs) I feel so official. Welcome to the Market Authority Show. (laughs) You definitely look official and you are official. Thank you. I feel official and I'm officially happy to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm what I am. Um... <laughs> okay. So what I feel like this is reflective of is our effort to level up and always in 2024. Absolutely. And so I'm looking to Q2 and when we had this, um, when we had this podcast, like when we were putting this conversation together, you said, you know, Steph, what we need to talk about is we need to talk about exactly how real estate agents are going to get control of their business in the second quarter of like, you know, you're past like the sleepiness of like the new year getting into the spring. That's kind of where I want to start the conversation. Does that sound good? I love that. I'm super excited to get into it. I am too. So um, we have some brainstorming questions that we're going to just kind of pop off and then have it just as like a a, a fun conversation amongst friends as we do. Um, what are we feeling from our agents recently? Like what frustrations and what are they dealing with today? What have you been hearing on your end? So I hear a lot of, I am doing the things, right? Like I'm having the open houses. I'm, you know, calling the people that I think I need to call. I am, you know, thinking about spring pot buys. I've got all of these plans and I'm thinking of all these things. But at the end of the day, I'm not really sure what I'm doing with all of it and how to come up with a plan and execute all the fun things. Yeah. Like it's more like the one-off actions and activities and not part of a a bigger like component in their business. Yeah, absolutely. Like I was scrolling Instagram or I was scrolling TikTok and oh my gosh, I saw this great idea for a pop by. Um, And so I like ran to the store (laughs) Let's be honest, running to the store is not a thing. Uh, we're getting <laughs> on the internet and trying yeah. to like track things down, right? And um, I, I just recently talked to an agent that was like, you know, hey, I bought some stuff on clearance. I got a great deal on it, which I am always doing. I'm always scouring for pot buys. But then it was like, who do I actually deliver these things that I have to? You know, like, where do they go? how do I have this conversation? You know, like, what do I do with this? Cause. And then the, and then the second thoughts start creeping in, like, wait, I haven't spoken to this person in a year. Is it going to be weird if I just drop something off on their doorstep? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or like, you know, I don't even know somebody. Should I just be doing this? Should I put my branding on something? And, um, I, I think that, I think that what's missing is purpose and kind of asking yourself what is doing this activity actually going to produce like what is the purpose of it right well it's so funny because you ask me that all the time yeah about different stuff like whether we're talking about content or things that we're trying to improve on the market authority side or if we're both just like brainstorming stuff for our real estate businesses because like, let's face it, that's a lot of what we talk about too. 
Yeah. Um, you're so good at pausing the conversation and saying, wait, but what's the purpose? What's the intention? Like, what are we trying to actually do here? Let's make sure that we have a, a plan to follow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that, I think that that's, I do that to a fault, right? I'm, I'm like, there has to be some sort of bigger p- picture here, you know, but I think that when you take the moment to pause you're able to come back and say, oh, you know, I'm doing this because I haven't talked to um, my past clients in a while. And I think this is a really great way to show them that I was thinking of them, super excited about spring and sunshine and, um, you know, maybe potentially growing some some vegetables, you know, like maybe that's what the pot pie is or, or whatnot. And, um, and I was thinking of you. And so here I am to show up and it's like, but why are we doing that? You know? And so if you answer that question, well, we're doing it to stay top of mind and we're doing it to pour into people and we are doing it, um, to with the aim of like you know potentially getting like repeat or referral business right and so then we can take it a step further and say like is it worth the time that it takes to find the gifts and to deliver them and to have the conversations and to actually take the action and if i may how are we going to continue that, right? Because doing it one one time, because it was a great idea, isn't going to get you anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so interesting because like for those who are like, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm hearing a lot of those conversations. Like people are really starting to like, okay, let's, let's get things going. It's been kind of a slow start to the year. Um, but it, it can't be like doing that spaghetti at the wall situation and then finding yourself again in this exact same position six months from now. Like, right. oh, yeah, I had a really busy spring. Things were great. And then like it died down during the summer because I was on vacation and I was tired and burnt out. And I didn't have a plan for like what to continue after that like first rush of inspiration. And by then it's July. It's August. Mm-hmm. The kids are going back to school and you're like, oh, let's try again next year. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so the cycle repeats. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Or you get really busy during the holidays and you're like, I didn't want this for my life. And then you kind of begin to shut down and you're like, I'll pick it back up. You know, what's missing in all of this is consistency. Yeah. 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 So, so when we're talking about consistency and that is like number one, like the main thing that we're hearing when consistency isn't there, what's what's actually happening in your opinion? Um, well, I mean, you sort of said it. Throwing spaghetti at a wall, not having a plan, um, knowing that you need to take action, but not knowing what the action is, I feel like is what's stopping you from being consistent. And mm-hmm. DIYing is so hard. I mean. It is so hard. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard if you're going to do it like to your house. It's hard if you're going to do it to your business. It's hard if you're going to do it like in a craft, you know, like it's just not going to feel good until you're doing it on a regular basis. Right. So if Mm -hmm. you're one time DIYing it, um, it is not going to land and it's going to be really tough. One thing that Uh, we are focusing on in the Market Authority Academy right now is um, not just consuming all of the information and being that student that's like, oh, I'm going to take all the notes and I'm going to learn all the things, but it's actually taking the action, right? It's practicing because, and I tell this to my children all the time, the more you practice, the better you're going to get, right? And so when yeah. we're doing hard things and it doesn't feel like it's worth it or you don't see instant results in this instant gratification um, era that we're in, right? You are like, ah, it's not working. I'm going to try something new. Well, 
that's not consistency. You know where I see that the most often is with mailers. My favorite thing that I hear is when agents come in and they're like, well, I don't know. I tried farming. I put down like a couple hundred dollars for postcards and I mail them to my neighborhood. And mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe I'll try that again in a couple months. And it's like, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> are you listening to what you're saying? That doesn't like, it doesn't work with farming. It doesn't work with like open houses. Like you can't have that same approach with open houses. Oh, I did an open house and no one came. So open houses don't work for me. Like, <laughs> right, right. And at that point, you're just like wasting your time and you're wasting your money. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. Um, I, I slowly started farming my neighborhood last year and really getting involved in the neighborhood. And I think I was like, I started this in January and I think in like August or September, people were like, oh, I think I, I've been getting mail from you. And I'm like, yeah, you have. So it took that long for them to even yeah. put the connection into play. And that also includes me, you know, going out for a walk and showing up to all of our HOA meetings and trying to host events and meeting the neighbors, showing up at the pool, right? Like it's, it's one thing to send something to a house every single month. Uh, it's another to send something to a house and show up in person and build the relationships. It totally is. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. If you are listening to this, if you're a real estate agent and you're like, I don't know. I'm like totally inconsistent going upstream without a paddle. I don't even have a plan. Um, and I know I need to like start doing things a little bit more strategically and with the long, long frame in mind, like where do they start? Do you think, is it lead generation? Is it, um, like client management? Is it time and task management? Where do you think they need to begin? So that's a really good question. And we definitely dive very deep into that. Um, once you get into market authority Academy. Yeah. Um, and I think it really depends on like what the outcome is. So if we go back to that question that I ask is like, why are we doing this? Right? So if we could, if we could kind of role play a little bit, um, yeah. why don't you tell me as an agent? um, kind of what you've been doing and like where you want to go. And I think we could probably figure out where your, um, path needs to take you, right? Like, does it need to take you down the lead generation path? Does it need to take you through like some of your systems and your, your journey and your, and your sales funnel, right? Or does it need to, um, does your focus need to be time and task management? Ooh. I like this a lot. I like this a lot because like a lot of times realtors come in to us and they're like, I don't know, everything's on fire all the time. Like I feel like a complete failure before I even begin. Something is off, something is wrong, but I don't know where the first mm -hmm. need is, like what the first fix is. So, okay, let's say, okay, so here I am. Boop, I'm the agent. Karen Ann, I always close like 12 deals a year. Like I've been in real estate long enough. I know I can count on 12 deals a year falling into my lap, but I want to double that. And I want it to be really predictable and consistent. Like I don't want to close one deal and then spend three weeks looking for the next one and so on and so forth. I just want to have like really consistent two to three deals a month. I want to close that like 24 deals a year. And I want it to feel good. And I don't want to double my business by working three times as hard. It's not that I'm afraid of hard work, but I'm already doing a lot of stuff that I feel like I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So my leads are not coming in consistently. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're coming in from. I just know they kind of happen. And okay. it's great when it does. I know what to do when I actually do get a deal. Mm -hmm. But I'm not actively orchestrating those deals coming in. And so because of that, I don't know how to create a schedule around those activities that can help me stay consistent. Mm -hmm. And even more to the point, every time I do try to start, I get sucked into distraction zone. So like when I try to go down this rabbit hole of fixing this myself, I start to uncover all the other challenges that are behind it that I'm not like really thinking about it. Like, oh, my systems aren't in place. 
oh, I could reach out to these people, but I don't know what to say. Oh, I don't, I don't even know how many people to, to talk to. And so for me, Karen Ann, my whole business can do a lot, but I feel like it's all on fire. It's a complete dumpster fire. And I don't even know where to begin with all of that. So it feels like the leads problem, but it also feels like the consistency problem. It also feels like I'm ghosting my clients. So like the client journey isn't there. And because of all this, I don't have any structure or rhythm to my days and my routine. And go. Here's your formula. I know. Uh, <laughs> no, so absolutely. It can feel like you are literally spinning your wheels, right? You're like a hamster on this wheel. Like, oh, what's first, right? Mm -hmm. For me, because you, the agents, are consistently already bringing in 12, de 12 deals a year, you already have that seasonality in this business um, based on kind of what we, uh, what you've just told me, what we're talking about. I actually want to recommend that you uh, focus on your time and task management, because I feel like once you get your time and task management down, um, everything else is going to fall into place. So you're already generating some business. Once you get your time and task management down, you're going to be able to scale from where you are right now to where you're going to go. And in turn, you're going to be able to nurture your people, take care of those dumpster fires, if you will, at a specific time, right? So we can focus on that so that you're not completely derailed. Yeah. So if we're looking at how to get control of your business in Q2, and the first place we need to start with um, is your time and task management, which routine or schedule do you suggest we look at first? So I think um, I, you know, we, we talk a lot about a prospecting routine, uh, which mm -hmm. I do think is important. Um, but I think that for this particular agent, I, um, I really want to see like what that winning schedule is going to do for their business. Right. So um, we have this process where we build out your winning schedule and it literally breaks down your day to day, your week to week, your month to month. And I think that once you start getting into the habit of that winning schedule, then you can add in the prospecting routine. Then you can add in the nurture sequence that you need to. And, um, and from there, you're going to be able to really take control. Yeah. Yeah. I love it because like you do have to get a little bit of a sense of flow and normalcy. And one thing that I've been thinking about a lot, and, and this ties in perfectly to like, if you feel like you're out of control in your business, that can feel really jarring because a lot of us get into real estate thinking that it's like that perfect path to freedom and flexibility. Um, we want to be able to have a say over our time. We want to be able to manage ourselves and our efforts. We want to have like a hand in destiny, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to it, you don't get freedom and flexibility without systems and structure, right? Like freedom and flexibility can only exist in a vacuum that is channeling it in forward motion in forward motion, because otherwise you can have the freedom and flexibility to freaking do Jack, what knows all like throughout the entire week and like all over the place, getting nothing done. And you have the freedom and flexibility to do that, but you're not going to be happy. Right. You're not going to be profitable. And then that freedom and flexibility is going to feel like a cage. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to feel like you're stuck in this horrible system that you've created for yourself. And the only way out of it is through it. And the only way through it is like adding in one layer at a time, more of those structures and organizations so if I were to think about it, if I could, mm -hmm. if we're thinking about like the, uh, the first thing that we need to do, like you say, looking at that structure for your schedule, like what does that winning day, winning week look like? You got to have like a start and stop time <laughs> a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. And, and that can kind of help you get into the mindset of like, okay, this is me in my work environment. This is my mindset. Like I got to shift into Stephanie's working 
And it's probably got to be in a place that's going to be conducive to that. It's probably got to be in a place that isn't going to have a ton of distractions or an environment that is going to feel good to be in. Right. I think that a lot of realtors are like probably working from home right now or like hopping around from coffee shop to coffee shop. And while that's a lot of fun, that can be really hard because like, for example, like if Bryce is out working at a coffee shop, he has to step outside to take a phone call. Mm -hmm. you know, because like, it's super loud, it's chaotic. And then as soon as he steps outside to take that phone call, he's stepping away from his laptop. He's stepping away from his laptop and whatever he was doing. So by the time he comes back in, it takes him so many minutes or whatever to like get back into the swing of things. And so like setting up a little bit of like that start and stop time and knowing that environment, like where it's going to be in, I feel like is a really easy place to begin, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. I used to work from the office, like my brokerage's Mm -hmm. office, and um, that's, in my opinion, a bit problematic as well, Um, depending, I guess, on the office, right? But in my situation, I was in this, like, bullpen area, and so I didn't have my own office. I was just kind of, like, in this openness with other agents also in openness, and um they're on the phone or somebody's walking by and they're saying, Hey, and they're seeing how the family is. And like, that feels good. And you're like, I am at work. I'm doing the thing, but you're not actually doing the thing. You're just in the building talking to the people that are your direct competition, you know, not that like, (laughs) you know, not that there's not a client for everyone, but like, once again, back to my question, what is this actually going to do for your business? Right. So I, I had to get out of there. I was like, I have to figure out how to make a home office and that's not without its own distractions either. You've got laundry Mm -hmm. and dishes in the sink and your dogs are barking at the mailman, you know, mail person. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's sort of like, what can I do to make this environment better for me so that I can go into work mode and can turn it off and working in your living room while you're watching Gilmore Girls? Not it. Not it. It feels good for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But then afterwards, it's like fire and destruction. You know, I was actually talking to um, some clients of mine. They're like really good friends. We had like a play date and stuff. We've done multiple transactions with them. So I say client, but really they're our friends now. Um, They have two kids about the same ages as my toddlers, and they both work from home. And what their older kid is in daycare now, like preschool slash daycare. Their younger kid is at home. And they do this thing where they both have their home office and it's like separate spaces and they shut the door and grandma is home with them watching their younger kid. And the moment they walk in to their home office, it is work mode and they straight up cannot walk out because as soon as they open the door to the office, baby hears them and it's like, mama, mama, you know, like wants, <laughs> wants to hang out with mom and dad. Cause like the baby knows that they're there. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like that same mentality of like, if you are going to leave your workspace, you have to be prepared to completely lose track of everything that you are doing. And so it does actually work in a, in a way where it like instills that like external accountability for them Mm -hmm. because they have to really stick to those windows of time to get their work done. And I kind of went through something similar where I'm a homebody. I love working from home. Like that's where my happy place is. But my one-year-old is like a pterodactyl. Like he just like is screeching all the time and he has his amazing sitter who's like his bestie and Vanessa takes such great care of of the kids trust her with them like fully but if I hear him yell like it sends me into a tailspin Mm. and because of that one big thing that I had to change last year that I was like for me this was such a hard decision I can't even tell you you know how hard of a decision this was um but it was so hard because like I had to get a, get an office outside of the house and not just like have a little desk at my broker's office, 
but I had to straight up have like a closed door dedicated office space at a place where I didn't know anybody so that I could actually get my work done because it had been, it had become so difficult to get it done at, at home. Mm -hmm. So all that to say, like, maybe look at your environment now, look at what has been working for you and ask yourself, like, if it's still serving you, because you might, you might've outgrown some of the rules that were really important to you, but just no longer fit in this phase of life. Yeah. So true. So could I ask, how has your business changed? How has your mindset changed since you got that office space? Oh my gosh, it's been a complete 180. Like it has, I, it has been the best thing I have done for myself in years. And after I had my first son, when he was like eight months old, I was having a conversation with um, another real estate coach who's like similar, does very similar to like, um, it does a lot of YouTube content. Like he's, you know, they're a name that people would probably recognize. I was talking to, to this person and they were like, oh, you can't be working at home with that kid. I was like, what do you mean? I love being at home. I get to like pop out in between Zoom meetings and like work in the business and stuff and snuggle with my baby. Like I loved it. I loved it. And having one baby was totally different. And my first kid didn't scream. He was not a pterodactyl like my second one. <laughs> and so I was like, what do you mean? They're like, they're like, listen, like when you leave the house, like you need to put yourself in an environment where you can really get this stuff done. You're going to be so much happier, so much more productive. Like, trust me on this. And I was like, ah, it's just, it's not the time. It's not the environment, like the conditions are not right for that. But that conversation keeps coming back to me because I remembered it when it came to the point to where I literally could not work in the house anymore. Like I couldn't do it. And it was a financial commitment that I was like really not forecasting. Like I was not prepared or really like ready to take on an office rent situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't know where to start. And I ended up finding this place that was like close, you know, within 10 minutes of my house, which is great. It's centrally located. So, um, if we have clients that need to like need attention or whatever, we're close to the freeways, close to where we serve a lot of our clients. So like that part is really cool. And, um, I find myself absolutely zeroed in on work. Like I do not get distracted. I don't even find myself mindlessly scrolling throughout the day because number one, I know what I need to be doing, which is like half the battle, but also the environment is right. Cause I walk into my office and it's work time mm -hmm. and it's just that simple shift of like, this is the expectation. This is where I need to get things done. And I have been more productive in the last three or four months than I have been in the last probably three years. Yeah. And I got oh. a lot done in the last three years. You, you definitely did. <laughs> so, um, so what are like the first three things that you do once you get into the office? Like what is a must oh, this is so to great. get into the mindset? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it actually starts the night before. Okay. Because I am not one of those girlies that's waking up at 5 a.m. That's not happening. Like, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> and it, it, part of it is because I'm just not built that way. Yeah. Um, and the other part of it is because like, I have young kids who are still waking up at night. Like my, my older son was like at my bedroom door knocking last night at 1130 asking for help. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not the time in my life where like waking up early is feasible. And right. so my day starts the night before. Um, and only, I feel like only parents will understand that. Cause sometimes I'll <laughs> say that to other parents, like just wake up before the baby wakes up. I'm like, you don't know, you don't understand <laughs> that that's just like not realistic. Well, that never works for my kids anyways, because my kid, well, my oldest is a light sleeper. And so if, if he hears mm -hmm. any noise, he is up. Um, he like came out of the womb, like FOMO, like I am not missing anything. <laughs> I love so that. I get that. <laughs> I'm challenging, but I love that FOMO. That's so funny. It it's it's so hard to explain it to people who don't get it. Um, but so so because of that, you know, I the evening of like I I'm usually on my laptop um in bed, and I know that's a terrible like habit. Like some of the like productivity and mindset people are like, ah, but like that's just what works for me. Um, and so like, I'll be on my laptop a little bit from like eight to 9 PM while we're watching something on the TV. Cause we also have a TV. We're a screens family. Like just everybody get over it. Yeah. Um, but like we'll have our TV on. <laughs> and, um, we'll be watching something on Netflix. That's like the only time that Bryce and I get to like, just kind of like 
yeah zone out for a little bit after bedtime and mm -hmm. so um we're both usually on our laptops like maybe finishing up like those last minute emails mm -hmm. the trade-off is um just side note i know we're talking about how to start the day but the trade-off to like having starting it in the evening is yes i'm on my my laptop at like eight o'clock for like 45 minutes or so unless i'm working on another project but like 4 30 laptop is closed 4 30 after work Laptop is closed, phone is down. I am not doing a thing until after bedtime. Mm -hmm. So this is after a window of fully dedicated family time of like four, four and a half hours. And that's that freedom okay, and so, flexibility, right? Like that's what yeah. you're looking for. So, sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely right. Like you get the freedom and flexibility to be present when you're with your kids Mm -hmm. And then to wrap up stuff, you know, at, at other times. And that's a decision that you get to make. And so I'm spending a little time planning to get to the point, like five minutes later, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, to get to the point. I'm spending a little time planning the next day. Um, and I'm looking at my calendar for the next morning and kind of setting like my to do's just so that I'm not like starting from scratch. And mm -hmm. what I might even do is if I have it in me, I'm going to plan out a little bit of stuff. So like, I'm going to make sure I have any content prepped or any mm -hmm. call list prepped. If there's anything that I can like begin working on just to give myself a head start, I'll do that. I might even hop on to chat GPT. If there's like an email that I need to send or content or something that I need to put out or like an email newsletter to draft, I'm going to go on to chat GPT and get like the first 10% done. I'm going to say like, here's what I need you to do. Here's what I need it to look like, put it all together. And then I'm just going to like have the thread on my laptop that I can like pull up the next day. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I have a little bit of something to, to start off of. And then my next morning looks like just chaos of me trying to get myself out the door, get Grady, my older son to preschool, get the nanny situated with my younger kid who's still at home. And then I'm like heading into the office at like 830 like I'm trying to get out the door as close to eight o'clock when our sitter comes as possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm going straight to the office and then I'm working there until four, four 30. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the moment I get into the office, I'm setting up my, my workstation. So I've got my water, I have my coffee. I'm like making sure my desk is nice and like organized. I'm probably lighting a candle. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and setting my intention That's because I'm a little woo. I like <laughs> got to set the mood. I'm like, with my little match, like <laughs> setting my intention for the day. <laughs> and Love then, that. and then I'm pulling up my to-do list again, mm -hmm. making sure I remember what I had planned on doing. And then I'm just like diving into work. And at this point, like my routines and my time blocks are so ironed in that it's like just a part of what I do. Like, right. I don't even think about the time blocks anymore. I don't even have to like write it down on paper because it's so ingrained in me that it's just a ha it's habit at this point. Yeah. I love that. But for yeah. agents that don't have that so dialed in and don't quite know what they're doing, I mean, you said it, you kind of said it, like, I don't have to write it down anymore. And not that you have to write it every single mm -hmm. day, but I remember there was a time where I was like, okay, getting into the office, gonna, you know, do my like workday startup. And I literally had that in a sauna, like drink a smoothie, um, you know, like write your goals, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. like read your, um, like read your intention for your life. And, and so it's okay to have to start off with something that's kind of reminding you to do something every day and it's okay to get used to that process. And then, you know, in your situation, 10 years later, you're like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't need something to remind me just because I'm automatically doing it, which is wonderful. Oh my gosh. I referenced exactly. I referenced my Asana workflows, which, um, is like huge for us. Right. And it's so helpful for agents who are just starting, but I referenced those workflows every single workday for like three years. Right. And that's why it's just like a total part. And, and when I say that, like, it's so ironed in for me, a really dialed in week is like, I'm on three days out of the five. Right. Right. Like, that to me is a great week. I crushed it for three out of the five days. The other day, maybe I wasn't feeling well and had a slower start. And then another day, you know, the kids got sick and needed to be picked up early from school or something crazy, you know? Right. Um, so, so like if you're like absolutely crushing it three out of the five days and you're sticking to what you say that you are going to do, you can get done what you need to get done. 
this whole thing of having to be like busy and on it and like 110%, that was a mindset shift that was really huge for me for getting in control because if I wasn't absolutely batting a thousand and Mm -hmm. um, if I had a day or two that just like wasn't going well, then I would scrap the whole week and say, I'll just try again next Monday because the whole week is shot. Like, have you ever done that? Yeah. I've done that about a lot of things in life, you know? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Like if I'm being honest, yeah. It's like, no, I'm just going to start over tomorrow, which is why, um, you know, when you start over on Monday or when you start over next week or next month, or I'm going to do it better. Yeah. But what if you did it now? Like, what if you just Mm -hmm. tried and, and you and I, um, and we've talked, we've talked to the members of market authority about this is we have found a pattern in our lives and our work lives where it's like Thursday morning needs to be a chill morning. Yeah. And that's okay. It is totally fine to be like, I need a little bit of a reset because 10, like we tend to like front load our week into what activities are going on, right? Like based on the fact that maybe you were out showing all weekend and you have to like go in, do some paperwork or front load some like conversations in the week, right? And Mm -hmm. then um, on Tuesday, you are kind of still wrapping that up and making sure that you've got your marketing in play. And then I feel like on Wednesdays that um, tends to be like a slower day in my life. And I think just like in general, like everybody's trying to get through the week, right? And they're like, ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we do a lot of that like intentional project work at that time. And so by yeah. Thursday, it's like, okay, I've had like a really well-packed, well-rounded, gotten a lot done. I need to just take a morning and have a little bit of self-care and not feel like I have to rush out the door right away, or um, I don't have to like completely load my calendar, or I could just, you know, go for a walk or like a, a good workout. I feel like you did like a cycling class or something one morning yeah. and you're like, ah, I needed this, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's also okay to notice those patterns and, and to build your schedule around what works for you. Yeah, I think that's such a good tip. So and I, and I always like, if I think about my follow up flow, and I made this like this video the other day, I should repost it. Um, but I made this video on Instagram where I was talking about my weekly follow up flow. And it's the same follow up flow that I've had for years in my real estate business. And I always leave Fridays as like anything that was missed. Yeah. So my follow up flow on Friday is literally like, hey, if there was something that I wanted to do, but like, inevitably something else came up, that's when I'm going to get it done. And if I've got nothing going on, then Friday is like, just kind of like the day that I get to take it easy. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've always kind of naturally done that. And then as our lives have gotten more hectic, I burn out earlier. Like Thursday Mm -hmm. is time. Thursday, we're very sleepy. (laughs) Thursday's a tough day for us, right? Um, And so so I would really like recommend agents who are listening to this to think about that and think about like where are those moments where like you kind of like fizzle out a little bit and plan for that. Like you should be planning ahead to have a little bit of that like rest and rejuvenation. So the way I did that this week, if I could share an example. Please please do. And you and I. You and I talk about this all the time too. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Like, hey, what are you doing on Thursday? <laughs> what are you doing to to rest a little bit? Um, so on uh, today is Wednesday. It's February 14th. It's Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. and so tonight, um, my husband and I are going out to Valentine's Day dinner at like 4:30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got to be home to get the sitter home and put our kids to bed. I'm like really excited about it. I love this phase of my life. Early dinners are like where it's at. Yes. Um. So we're going out to like an early little dinner date. We're just gonna have fun. I might have a glass of champagne. I might not. I'm not really drinking right now. And, um, then I'm going to like, let myself kind of take it super slow tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Like we have a pretty busy day, but like, if I can not make it into the office until 10 and maybe instead, like, just kind of like have an easygoing morning, like that to me sounds perfect. And if I can do that, then I'll have enough energy to push through the rest of the week. Right. Absolutely. The other aspect of this that I feel like we're kind of always working on. And I feel like every time I come on the podcast, I'm talking about it, but it is, 
it is balance, right? And so like this morning for me, I was, oh, man, we're getting like a little sick over here in our house. And so like woke up with a scratchy throat and I'm like, Meh, I'm not happy about this. I'm tired. I'm grumpy, mm -hmm. you know, all the things. And so I just told myself, you know what? I have a little bit of time. I'm going to take a long, hot shower. I'm going to chill. And I got out of the shower and I put on like those eye puffing, like, you know, like mask for your under eyes. Mm -hmm. And it just, yeah. like, just to sit there, even like, even though I was like, doing my work on the computer. I was like, Ooh, self-care moment. It's totally fine. Nobody's seeing my face. Um, and it just yeah. helps me to like feel a little bit like I have time for myself. I, I truly enjoy like working. So it's not a, <laughs> it's not an issue for me to do that, but like mm -hmm. to be in comfortable pants with Gilmore girls on in the background, which I know we kind of advised against, but like on a special on a special morning, it's totally fine to do that yeah. with some under eye patches and like get your glam on, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, cause, cause what we're trying to do is be consistent, right? Like if you're trying to, if you are trying to get control of your business in Q2 and consistency is the thing that keeps derailing you, yeah. you might be in that position to where you're just trying to go at a full on sprint. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is you can only maintain a sprint for so long. Oh yeah. Right. Like that's why there's like the hundred meter sprint. It's like a, like a short shot and you go as fast as you can. And then you stop. Like you're not supposed, there's no like long, long distance sprinters, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not just recreationally at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so when, when we think of like, what does consistent mean? Consistent means being able to maintain a clip, at, like a specific pace for a really long period of time. And part of that is accounting for the rest. And part of that is accounting for a little bit of balance, right? So that mm -hmm. you can fuel up a bit, take a rest, get realigned with the strategy, mm -hmm. check and make sure that what you're doing is working and then go back at it a little bit. Um, and I think that that's one of the best things that we can do in 2024. And I think that that's a great antidote for hustle culture which mm -hmm. hustle culture mm -hmm. is like so big in real estate and mm -hmm. um, it's just exhausting. Like yeah. the churn and burn having to like just start up over again after every deal without taking a second to acknowledge the fact that you like closed a really hard transaction and celebrate the clients. Like, I think that we're over that. Like, I feel like as an industry, we're looking to move beyond that. Mm -hmm. And instead we're looking to like, how can we just find a little bit of enjoyment in this and not sacrifice the stuff that really matters just to get ahead a little bit. Yeah. That was so profound. Like, <laughs> honestly, it's true though. Like it's very, it's very true. And with that comes like, in order to be able to do those things, you have to have a plan in place. Yeah. You know, like, if you don't have the plan, if you're not accounting for the fact that Thursdays tend, you tend to need like, more of a chill day. If you're not accounting for the fact that, and man, I don't know if I'm like even overstepping when I say this, but like Friday, I feel like in my area at least tends to be a closing day. Right. And so, yeah. um, like you got to kind of like account for that in your schedule. And like Monday is the day where you're like sitting at the computer and you're like starting the week, but also, checking to see what is available for your clients or wrapping up those like final offers that you're sending in. And so having a plan in place, being able to fluctuate um, how you plan out your day and your week is, is vital. Right. And knowing, you know, I've, I've got to get in time to, to generate some business, like generate some leads. I've got to get in time to make sure that I'm nurturing my current clients, making sure that I'm, you know, following up, making sure that I'm moving someone through the sales funnel, making sure that I'm getting the paperwork done at a certain time, right? Like, obviously that has to happen, but that shouldn't necessarily like take up your entire day because there's some sort of fire, right? And then really making sure that you are... um getting in that like extra balance as well 
for whatever you want to do in your personal life, because that's important too. So having a plan to really make sure that all of the pieces are in place and practicing that plan is vital. Yeah. And feeling good about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So like one thing that, that Bryce never does is like shame me for needing Mm -hmm. a little extra time to go a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like getting people on board with that and creating a little bit of, and I guess that goes back to the environment, but creating a culture and environment around yourself to where people understand that and support you in that. Um, like if you're watching a lot of content, there's this, there's this gal that I follow. I've showed you her stuff. I love her reels on Instagram because she's like Mm -hmm. a mom productivity. Mm -hmm. Um, she has four kids and she's a, a, a homeschooling mom Mm -hmm. and she's really, really into productivity. Mm -hmm. And her whole thing is she runs her life and her kids and her home like a Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. And so like very much like habit driven, um, very much waking up at 430 to get the one hour long workout in before the kids wake up and all this stuff, which I, I love. And in a past life, I would have been all about that. Mm -hmm. But in this season, like that Mm -hmm. is not the energy for me. And just like recognizing and accepting the fact that this season, I need to be a little bit more gentle with myself. Mm -hmm. And I need to be leaning into that like feminine energy a bit more where things are a little bit slower. I'm focused more on nurturing. Um, And and not to say that she's not taking care of herself because she is, it's just, Mm -hmm. she recognizes what she wants at that phase in her life. And that's what Mm -hmm. she's going for. Right. Um, And I think that's like super important is understanding like what phase are you in, in in Q2 Mm -hmm. and how can you make sure that you're going to like create an environment that's going to support that. And we've been thinking a lot about our, our clients. So like we, we work with, you know, hundreds of real estate agents in the market authority Academy. We're working closely with um, a really great group of agents right now going through the modules and going through our coaching calls Mm -hmm. Um, And we have been changing up quite a bit in the Market Authority Academy, you and I, to -hmm. make sure that we are meeting them where they're at and really supporting them. And so can you just share with me, like, we've got a lot of stuff coming out, so I don't know how much we want to cover. But can you share with me something that like you're really excited about or that you feel really good about of how we've changed, how we're doing things in the Market Authority Academy to better support our agents in Q2? So... Going back to this like theme that we have this month, which is like stop over consuming and start practicing. We are putting together like, first and foremost, we redid everything, right? Like we (laughs) made sure that everything was, um, what do you always say? Oh my gosh, I'm going to say it wrong. Simple yet what, what do you say? Keep it simple, but keep it significant. Thank you. If ever anyone were to ask me what Stephanie Lugo says about that, I will come up with any other S word other than significant. I'll be like sophisticated. And it's, <laughs> I, I just can't remember it. But basically, that's kind of how we've gone into um, how we've gone into everything that we have begun to produce and every change that we have made. Um, And so I really love that we are focused on making sure that you are taking action and you're doing it as efficiently as possible. Um, Because at the end of the day, we all want that freedom and flexibility. We all want to just work the two to three hours a day. Right. And when I tell agents that they can do that, they quite literally gasp, like, no, that's not right. And we're like, no, you can get your work done in that much time, in that little time, however you want to word that, right? But I am most excited about um, the, the efficiency that we've built in that in turn forces our members to practice efficiency in their business. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been really fun going through and rethinking a little bit about how we are delivering that. So like one thing that we've done is really just setting the expectations and giving agents permission to like, like you said, stop consuming, like how often, and if you're listening to this, like shout us out on Instagram and, or send us a DM at Bryce Mm -hmm. and Stephanie. I want to hear that. Um, if you've ever been like stuck in 
consuming information mode, right? Like you're watching all the videos, like every morning at the gym, you're pulling up YouTube and like searching up like how to start with a CRM or like what my daily schedule needs to look like. And you're watching free webinars and going through and listening to this podcast or whatever. And you're consuming, consuming, consuming and not actually taking action. Like, I feel like that's going to be like the really important next step, I guess, in getting control of your business in Q2. It's Mm -hmm. like, take action, Mm -hmm. stop just tinkering around on Canva for hours and hours, or stop Mm -hmm. just like playing around on the internet, trying to make sure that all the information you have or that you need is is there. Like, just Mm -hmm. start getting it done. Like, Mm -hmm. put something in place and iterate along the way. It's not going to be perfect the first time. Mm -mm. And allow yourself the grace to -hmm. just put something out there and then go back and tweak as you go. You get so much more done in a shorter amount of time when you have that mindset. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why we structured the program the way we did. So, like, you know, the market, if you're listening to this and you're like, what are they talking about? The Market Authority Academy is a hybrid mentorship program. And part of it is an online digital blueprint. And it walks you through like a seven step curriculum to creating all these systems into your business from the ground up. Mm-hmm. And when we created it, we decided, okay, they need lifetime access to this, to that content specifically. Because like you want to go through and then you're going to want to go back in like three times to fill in the gaps over the years. Mm -hmm. And we have realtors who will go through and do that over the years. Like every single year they go through the entire curriculum as a way to work on the business, which is like super, super fun to me, which I love. And then you get the coaching calls where if you need support as you're doing it, like you can, you can do that as well. That's part of the, the program too. Um, but you have to expect that things are going to change and evolve over time. And so for that reason, you can't wait, like you cannot wait until something is absolutely perfect to hit go. Mm -hmm. Like you have to take action before you think you're ready because you are ultimately never going to get ready. You're never going to be ready. Absolutely. And that goes for anything in life, right? Like you're never ready to, I don't know get married. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but like, you're never ready to have a kid like, cause you don't know what you don't know. Right. Right. And so like, you're never fully 100% prepared. So you've got to just do it and you've got to overcome perfection. I will never, ever forget when I met you. Uh, what are we on like year six, six years ago or something like Uh that. Um, and I was doing the thing that you just kind of referenced. Like I was just on Canva making graphics and I'm like, I am so busy doing my work, but I don't know why I'm not getting business, you know? And you were very like straightforward and you were like, you need to be doing X, Y, Z, like Uh plain and simple. And I was like, Oh, actually that makes so much sense. And so do I get to play on Canva? Yes. Is it my priority every single day? Absolutely not. Because that is not what's going to actually get my business to the next level. Yeah. But it feels good in the moment. (laughs) It's so fun. And you like, I know that people that are listening don't know me, but like, you know me. And so I'm like, (laughs) I will literally tinker and tinker and tinker. Um, And then like my eyes will cross and I will still be tinkering. And it doesn't matter because like, I truly enjoy it. But that is not what's actually going to bring me business. And that's not um, going to help me connect with new people, right, to to get where I want to go. Yeah, I love it. So so help me talk a little bit about the um, the big launch that we have coming up. We haven't really like assigned like a special name to it, but really what's going on is we're launching a rebrand of the market authority. We've thrown around a couple of name options like the glow up. Oh yes. And we are going to launch it all and start with a big fun week of fun and surprises and giveaways. Did we decide starting on March 18th? Is that we just what we decided Karen Ann? I don't know. Um, I think it's March 18th. We're obviously still in the planning phases at the time that this is getting recorded, but it's going to yeah. be fabulous. And I don't have the calendar in front of me. And honestly, I live by the calendar. So um, I know. live and breathe by that thing. Um, but I'm very, very, very excited because um, we are going to have a special, um, we're going to have a special group, a special face, Facebook group 
where we have lots of activities, lots of action is going to be taken, lots of um, tangible um, bite-sized pieces that you can take and literally put into your business and start seeing results um, pretty quickly. So I'm super excited about that. So we're going to put together a way that you can opt into that if you're listening to this. And along with our revamp, our reimagined glow up of the Market Authority Academy, what we're doing too is giving away one of each of our systems guides. So we have our CRM setup guide. We have our time and task management guide, and we have our high converting content guide. And these are going to be available in the new shop that we are launching as well. But when you join that group, and if you play with us on the 18th, when we are having our fun launch week with all of our um, activities and stuff, we're going to have ways that you can get those goodies as a giveaway. So we're super excited for all of the fun that we have planned. Um, definitely make sure that you are staying tuned for that. Yes, it is going to be a party. It is going to be amazing. Super pumped. Karen Ann, thank you so much for hanging out with me today on the pod. I love having you as always. And Aww. you are so generous with your perspective and you really fill in so many of the areas where I feel like I fall short. I'm so happy that we get to work together because you and I feel like complement each other so well in those ways. I agree. I, I absolutely adore working with you and I've learned so much, um, in business and in life from you. I'm so honored to be here. I always love being a guest <laughs> and, um, I cannot wait to continue to, uh, lift each other up with all of our fun and crazy ideas that we get to bring to life every single day. I love it. For those who are listening in, be sure to connect with Karen Ann at, uh, on Instagram. I'm going to have the links where you can follow her there. Karen Ann, thanks for hopping on with me today. It was fun chatting. Thanks. Bye.